hello hello family welcome to grace resolution um where you guys can receive light-hearted but intentional words from the father to help you through your current life situations to give you more clarity and more understanding all right when listening to these words make sure you go back to father god and ask him to clarify if this word is for you or for someone surrounding you who you can then impact by sharing this message with all right do not forget to leave a like don't forget to comment and do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not already i would love to have you guys a part of this new ministry Alrighty, so let's go ahead and jump right into today's word y'all know how i like to do it okay just jump right in because baby no time to waste okay so the title of today's word is god wants you to bear that cross to receive the shift that he's bringing towards you and those that you impact all right and this reminds me of the scripture esther four uh Esther chapter 4 and verse 14. Who knows, but you may have come to this royal position for such a time as this. This is what Mordecai has said to Esther when there was a hit on the Jews. And Mordecai went to Esther as a resort to try to de-escalate the situation. And that's something that he told her. He said, who knows, but you have come to this royal position for such a time as this meaning who knows but maybe you coming to this royal place maybe you being in the kingdom maybe you being with the king was intentional because literally you are meant to help us defeat whatever evil is trying to come against us and the only way that we can defeat this is by you facing and going to the king to address whatever this situation is you were placed in this kingdom for a special reason so who knows maybe this could help us maybe this could save us this is the last resort this is the only thing left right so that's what's happening here all right you guys were placed in a position in a royal position all right you guys were placed in a royal position because i'm hearing like joseph you were meant to help the people back at home for you joseph did the same thing joseph although he was his brothers had mistreated him and caused him to be a slave and then later on he got in prison and then he later on become he became royalty in the land of egypt and he was able to help his family during the time of famine yeah it's the same type of energy no matter what you've been through all of your trials and your tribulations have led you to a place of royalty where you can now help others around you who you impact and those who literally listen to you all right so today we're reading from matthew chapter 27 verses 20 i mean 38 through 53 all right it says then two criminals were crucified with him one on the right and one on the left those who passed by were yelling insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests with, scrib with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, he saves others, but he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now, if he takes pleasure in him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, even the criminals who were crucified with him taunted him. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over the whole land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Ela, Ela, Lemaskapashani. This is my God, my God. Why have you abandoned me? Hopefully I didn't pronounce that incorrectly. Sabastani. Yeah. When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a stick. Then they offered him a drink. But the rest said, let's see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and gave up his spirit. Suddenly, when his spirit left his body, right after that, suddenly, the curtain of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked and the rocks were split. The tombs were also open and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep. We know what that word means. The, the believers who deceased in the physical would technically sleep to God, okay? 
And they came out of the tombs after this res after his resurrection. Entered the holy city and appeared to many. All right. So this is a whole lot, but we're gonna go ahead and get into the numbers that Father God gave me. All right. So we have three numbers, um, and the first number is four eleven. And this means in the Strong's Concordance, we ain't using no angel numbers over here, okay? Straight Hebrew and Greek translation, okay? 411 means these, those, all right? Like a collaboration or um, a gathering of more than one, okay? More than two, okay? Then we have the next number, 1234. I kept seeing this number. Even on the clock, it would be 1234. I would see it on the address. I would see it on TV, like on the house, on the TV. And I'm like this number is just not it's not a coincidence you know so i go to look it up in the strong concordance and it actually means to cleave to break open to break through that's what jesus did when he when his soul left his body when the holy spirit left his body instantly things broke open the curtain was torn in two from top to bottom the earth quaked and the rocks were split things broke you hear what i'm saying there is a massive shift that is happening. 535, to be weak, languish, to droop, to be sick, mourning, right? So with these numbers, Father God let me know that you guys have been experiencing a, a breakthrough, but you have been in the midst of the storm. Like you haven't reached the rainbow yet. You've been in the storm and you've been fighting. And I'm getting at Jacob when Jacob was sent to go back to Esau and how um, how he was kind of hesitant to go after he sent the tribes and the, the gifts to his brother. He was still hesitant and he decided to stay back and rest for a night. And God met him and rest with him, right? It's like that energy. It's like There was a shift that needed to happen. There was a change, some type of change, some type of breakthrough that needed to happen. And right now you're in the midst of the storm and you're fighting and you're fighting and you're fighting God for this blessing, right? But the blessing, I'm hearing you already hold the key. You're fighting God for something that you already hold the key to. For some of you, I mean, I just heard Father God saying, because you are the key. Oh, Father God is saying, because you are the key. You hold the key, but you're fighting me about this key, about receiving this key when you are the key, okay? God wants you to bear the cross like Jesus was the key to us for our sins to be forgiven because if Jesus was not sacrificed, as God did not send his son down here, God would look at us and be like, you're an abomination, zap. God, God would look at us and be like, you gotta go, zap, you know? But when Jesus was sacrificed, his blood covered us, so it gives God, when God looks at us, he don't just see us, he see his son's blood and then he sees us and he remembered, he, he remembers the love that he has for his son and he said you know what i'm going to give you another chance because my son my, my son was sacrificed so that you could be forgiven for the things that you keep doing of the world so you know what i'm going to forgive you because every time i look at you i see the blood of my son and because i can't hurt my son just for the simple fact that he I mean, just just for the, just because because that's not the type of person that i am i'm going to give you the opportunity i'm going to give you that chance to prove yourself to show me to honor me to love me the way that i love my son the way that i love you because god really loves us but the way the things that we do in this world the ways that we live it upsets the lord think about it it was in genesis when the lord was like when he was seen he looked down at the world and he seen how much of a catastrophe it was he was devastated he was hurt he was even upset that he even created us as he he was upset that he created humanity so just imagine what god could be how God could be looking at us when we sin but he still has that compassion because when he looks at us he don't just see us he see Jesus's blood over us and then he sees us that's what gives us the second chance that's what allows us to be redeemed in the name of the Lord by the grace of God that's what allows us to be redeemed because if we didn't have Jesus's blood covering us we would be in a world of trouble okay so Let's go ahead and get into the download that Father God gave me. All right. Jesus was made to impact sinners 
and those lost shepherdless sheep. He hung on the cross so that those who were seen as having no hope could have hope to get into the kingdom of heaven. God knew that there was a serious battle in this world and that the devil was doing all that he could to try and have dominion over us as God's people. But God sent his only son to show Satan that's not how it's going to go down, buddy. <laughs> when Jesus was sacrificed, Jesus went to, down to hell to go get the keys of death from Satan. He snatched him, give me them keys. And he took him right back up to the kingdom of heaven. You got God and Jesus messed up, brother. Because <laughs> Jesus is an extension of God. So if you got God messed up, and you got Jesus messed up. Okay, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's just what I'm saying. Like Many judged Jesus for enduring all the suffering that he was being put through. And was saying, if you're this son of God, then save yourself. Why haven't your God come to save you? And if Jesus wanted to egotistically prove himself, he would have just got up off the cross and showed them that he could indeed save himself. But he didn't. He endured the cross because he was not only doing it for God, but he was doing it for the people that he could bring back to God. So that God could receive the glory of restoration, of grace, of love, of mercy. Jesus, if Jesus wanted to just prove his own power and forget about God, he could have got off that cross. But his purpose was bigger than himself. His purpose was bigger than himself. So he had to endure. He stayed obedient to Father God's command, which was to bring salvation to all humanity. Jesus endured for the betterment of all. These people were talking to him, talking about if you if you're this if you're this son of God, then you should be able to save yourself. Come on now, come on now. You can have people poking and pointing at you, telling you, well, if you're this, if you're so godly, if you're so holy, then then do this or do that or jump here and leap there, you know. And it's like, who are you? <laughs> Who are you? Who gave you dominion over me? Because last time I checked, we're all equal. God created us all with equal dominion. Right? I mean, we're all human. We have we all have dominion over animals. But none one of us have dominion over each other. Because God has dominion over us. Like we have dominion over the creatures of this world. The animals of this world. That's the only authority that we have in this world. Literally over the animals and over us uh, of course spiritual principalities like over the demonic energy like we have the authority over that over satan as well but literally we have authority over satan and we got authority over the animals we don't have authority over each other or god they literally tried to get jesus to prove himself when they ain't nothing to prove, they ain't nothing to be proved to. They ain't nobody to be proved to. They ain't worthy to be proved to. Because if the simple fact that Jesus came and he was saying this is who he was. And he wasn't even saying it. He was showing it. And they got jealous. If Jesus was to explain himself, they would just get even more upset. And this reminds me of Proverbs with the um wisdom. Don't rebuke a mocker or he will hate you. Rebuke the wise and he will love you. Don't, don't, don't basically let them know. Don't tell them your disapproval or criticize them of the things that they do that's not righteous. Just let them be. Let them be. Because a fool is going to talk. A fool is going to think they know it all when really they know nothing at all. <laughs> They think they know it all, but they know nothing at all. <laughs> all right. So God has been using you to bear the cross for your family. To break generational curses and to bring a new light into the bloodline. Mm. There has been an abundance of pain and suffering bestowed upon you. Like Jesus. Jesus had to go through with that crown. He had to get beat. He had to get he had to carry that cross for that long distance. Then he got nails in his hand and his feet. 
He got stabbed in his side. Jesus went through so much suffering. He went through so much pain and suffering. And even though your pain and suffering ain't been as brutal, that's not going to count out the pain and suffering that you literally experience. Your pain and suffering is pain and suffering still too. But you went through that for a greater reason. There has been an abundance of pain and suffering bestowed upon you because God knew that you, of all the people within your bloodline and within your family, God knew that you could bear it. Before he brought you into this world, he seen the corrupt and destructive energy that flowed through your bloodline and he knew that you would be the one to change it. I keep hearing witchery, warlock, demonic energy, all, sorcery, all of this trickery stuff like that, magic. Father God is saying all of this stuff was in your bloodline and Father God seen it. And he knew that before he even blessed you into and put you in your mother's womb, before he even blessed you and put you into your mother's womb, he assigned you a mission. He said, here, this is what you're going to go into this world. And this is what you're going to do when you when you step into your potential, when you step into who you're meant to be in this world, in, in this lifetime. All right. This is your task before you reach that place. And this is going to be your task when you reach that light within your life, when you come back to me. OK, because, of course, God placed you into a uh, into the carnal environment because there was some healing that needed to be done. So you were in the dark, meaning you weren't as close to God as you should have been. But he was still right there with you, guiding you through all that darkness. OK, I'm hearing he was your guiding light, like a nightlight, like a kid that sleep with a nightlight at, at night. God was your light through all that darkness. Like I said, the kids sleeping at night, but they got the nightlight plugged into the wall. That's the only light, but that light brightens up the room. Yeah, God was your nightlight through that darkness that you had to experience. All right. Like Jesus, you may feel that God is nowhere in your life, but trust that he is behind the entire plan and you will come out victorious. All right. So, like I said, Jesus had called out, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All right. And um, reading this little excerpt here, he said, Jesus' words here are both a quote and fulfillment of Psalms 22, 1. Though he had previous, uh, though he had previously known only unbroken divine fellowship from all eternity, Jesus experienced the horrible abandonment of his father as God poured out his wrath on his son as he bore the sins of the world. Jesus, in his humanity, felt separated from his father in bearing humanity's sin. This is the feeling people have when their sin separates them from God. All right. So you had to go through that experience of feeling neglected by Father God to be able to come out on top. I'm hearing wherever you were in the wilderness or wherever you are in the wilderness, Father God led you there for a specific reason. I'm hearing this is the end of your journey. Wow, like Jesus came. He was ministering. He was healing. He was doing all of that stuff. He was making an impact. God sent you into people's lives to do the same type of thing. To, sh to show them a different side to life, to show them to love themselves, to do better, to come out of their darkness. You were that light. And the final step for Jesus was getting on the cross. And I'm hearing you are at your final stage now bearing the cross. Father God is saying he wants you to keep bearing the cross because you're not only doing it for yourself, but you're doing it for others who you impact, for others who love you, who keep their eyes on you. Like Jesus had followers keeping their eyes on him and following him. God is saying you are at the cross. God wants you to bear the cross. I'm hearing the reason things feel like Nothing is changing. The reason it feels like God has turned away from you, and I'm hearing you have been expressing, you have been shedding a lot of tears. You have been expressing a lot of pain because of the suffering that you have been placed in. I'm hearing you've been beaten spiritually. You've been you've been crowned with that thorn crown. You feel me? You've been humiliated. You've been stuck in the, you've been placed up on this cross and you've been nailed in your hands. Father God is saying, he wants you to keep bearing the cross because like Jesus, you're going to open up. I'm hearing because you're the key. Wow, like Jesus, you're going to open up a door that has never been seen before for your bloodline.
You're not just doing this for you. Jesus felt like he had separated from his father, but truly it was the sin of humanity that put a dark cloak over him to hide him from the Lord. Sin is the cloak that caused God to not truly pay attention to the cries of his own son, even though his son was truly, truly pure. Can you imagine? You sin so bad and you carry so much sin that God don't even see you no more. He don't even care to look your way because he can't see you because you've been enveloped in sin like a lotus flower no is that the venus flytrap you've been closed in or yeah i think it's the lotus flower that closes up like that and that can open wide yeah so it's like you've been enveloped and caved into the sin and father god can't see you through it which is why he can't hear your cry because like if you're stuck inside of a lotus flower a big giant lotus flower and it's closed you in ain't nobody gonna hear your cries because of the different levels of the petals that is on that lotus flower right so it's like soundproof ain't nobody gonna be able to hear it and when you're enveloped and you're covered in so much sin oh holy spirit this is so good this is so good when you're covered in so much sin like jesus had to be covered in so much sin for humanity to receive the wrath that he did when you're covered in so much sin god can't hear you he can't see you it's only until you come out of when you start pushing down on those pedals to get yourself out of that out of that bondage will God be able to see you? Will God be able to hear your mumbles? You know? So this is the energy God has you in currently. He's disciplining you, but also allowing you to endure so that you can bring about an immense change within the bloodline. This is built up healing that has been pending from generation to generation, from your mother, from your father, from her mother, from her father, from his uh, mother, from his father, ex on and on, you know, from, from then, right? All of that trauma and stuff that had yet to be addressed, all of that was placed on you. All of that baggage, all of that weight was put on you because God knew that what? You could do it. All right? God knew that you would be the brave one to set it off and break those chains of enduring and, and break those chains by enduring. Although it's painful, you're enduring for all generations before you and that will come after you. So you can't give up. Like I said, if Jesus would have gave up on that cross, we would not be able to be forgiven for Father God. So you have to endure. You have to endure because this is bigger than you. It's bigger than you. God has so many blessings that are awaiting to be unlocked within your bloodline. Like when Jesus cried out again with that loud voice and then his, the Holy Spirit left his body right after he gave up his spirit, the curtain of the sanctuary ripped from top to bottom. This is symbolic for the new way made for those who were and are in bondage to death. This, 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 uh, this cloth ripping into two, it was this new pathway that was created by Jesus for sinners and those who are lost to be able to walk towards Jesus and to walk towards Father God to get right, to repent, all right? The earth quaked, the rocks split, and the tombs were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and came out of the tombs, and they entered the holy city and appeared to those in it. Your blessings are bigger than you. Your blessings are going to be something that literally shakes your entire bloodline. Like you're going to have people looking at you like, God is real. Like God is going to do something so big in your life. God is going to do something so big in your life. Like when Jesus left, he was placed on the right throne. Of, he was placed on the throne of God. When you, uh, when you finish this, you are going to be the, you are going to be on the throne of God. Understand what I'm saying. God is going to put you in a power position to where people that were influenced by you are going to be in awe of you. They're going to be like, God did that. 
God is going to get the glory because so many people that were being influenced by you or they were being impacted by you, they're going to see the glory of God over your life. Like we see how Jesus changed, how his image changed when he went to heaven. He received a new face, a new look, right? That's the same type of energy. People are going to see the glory of God on you. Like we are able to see the glory of God. I can't remember what scripture that was where he was talking about Jesus was sitting. Uh, I forgot. Um, but yeah, Jesus had a new look about himself when he was sitting on the throne of God, right? And that's the same type of energy here. You're going to have this glory of God over your life, and people are going to be like, I'm hearing you're going to, people are going to see so much glory of God over your life that they're going to want to come to your side. They're going to want to get right with God because they're going to be like, dang, if God could do that for them, what can God do for me? I'm hearing God. It's me again. I see you're doing it for others and I know you can do it for me. That's what I just heard. <laughs> so literally, God is saying, I'm about to do something so big in your life that it's about to bring an immense change. It's about to bring so many people towards me. When Jesus sacrificed himself, he brought more people to God, which brought more glory to God. And this is something that you're going to be doing as well. You're going to be bringing more glory to God by whatever immense change that God is going to bring your way for you enduring. And people are going to see it and they're going to want to have that for themselves. And then they're going to start working, working on their own journey and their own relationship with Father God. That's exactly what Father God wants. And he's going to get exactly what he's been wanting. Why? Because he is the creator and he know how to align all things to align perfectly. Okay? So I definitely hope that this warrior helps somebody out there. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Make sure you guys leave a like, make sure you guys comment on this video and make sure you guys subscribe to the channel to stay tuned, okay, for when I upload again. Alright you guys, I love you guys so much and until next time. Peace!